I'm here with Genesis entry level vehicle. This is the G70 rear wheel drive sports sedan made in Korea. Is it as good as the Acura TLX Type S that I just reviewed earlier this year? Today we'll find out. We're in the 55 plus thousand dollar G70 and this has the sports prestige package. This is essentially top of the line. It has the electronically controlled suspension or adaptable suspension, whatever you call it. Limited slip diff. It's got the head up display, Napa leather seating surfaces microfiber suede headliner and pillars surround view monitor blind spot view monitor power trunk heated steering wheel it's got everything loaded but there are some updates for 2024 and that's going to start under the hood so let's go and check that out now this is the top of the line so it does have the 3.3 liter twin turbo v6 made it to the eight speed automatic now like i said it's rear wheel drive standard but you can get it in all wheel drive around 365 horsepower and a little bit more pound feet of torque on top of that this thing is insanely peppy as we'll find out once we start driving. But the big difference under the hood for this 2024 model year is they got rid of the two liter base engine and they bumped it up to a two and a half liter base engine. So you go from about 250 horsepower now to 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque on the base model. So the base model just got a lot more attractive compared to the outgoing generation. Twin turbo V6 here, the 3.3 still hasn't been upgraded to the three and a half liter uh, that we see in other uh, Genesis vehicles. All right. I apologize that the vehicle is, well, it's dirty. My neighbor's sprinklers went off on it overnight and you guys probably feel my pain, but it doesn't stop this vehicle from getting tons of looks. It is beautiful. I think this color, if I remember correctly, is called Kawa Blue. Absolutely gorgeous. We got a refresh on the G70 a couple years back. New headlights, new front grille design. We got those side slots. Also new for 2024, our Brembo brake standard. We got 225 width of the front. In the back, we have 255 width. Uh, gorgeous sedan from the side, blacked out B pillar uh, window bezel there. Darker chrome around the window. You see that 360 camera there as well. Very beautiful uh, sunroof there with the paint matched to give you that illusion here. Uh, that this is all glass. It looks really, really nice. More of that iconic crisscross pattern there by the exhaust tip, the oval exhaust tips here. Now they're just really exhaust enclosures because if we come in close, we have actually square exhaust, uh, quad tip square exhaust. I wish this had a more aggressive rear end because you're packing so much power here and the rear end, it looks luxury, but it doesn't look performance. So hopefully Genesis, you can up that uh, with the next generation. All right, 3.3T here, uh, very subtle, and an all, you would get an all-wheel drive badge if it was all-wheel drive, all right? I'm gonna lift this trunk lid up. It is automated here in the Sports Prestige package. Pretty small trunk, not gonna lie. Luckily, you can fold down the seats if you need additional cargo space. Lifting this up, we do have a spare tire, so kudos to them for doing that for us. Let's get in the back seat. This is one of the shortcomings of the G70. Uh, well, not the materials, as we'll find out. Beautiful cr uh, cross stitching here, this kind of checkered pattern. It's absolutely beautiful. Lexicon sound system is fantastic in here. Genesis skid plate looks really nice. The materials on here are super impressive, feels great, all the way to the edge of the door with the, the high quality stitching and piping. The problem is this is my seat set up for six foot one. There's no way I can sit back there. My kids actually can't really fit their, their little feet back here they can't slot them in between. They have to move it to the side or just keep their feet up. So it is just way too small for the back seat. So if you want the G70, it's essentially a, a four, like a four door coupe. If you want to think about it that way, there's just not a lot of space. Kids love playing with the cup holders here. Two USB-Cs, again, that's new for 2024. Um, I also love this feature as well. If there's no one sitting up here, I can give this kid a little bit more leg space, but this kid is just out of luck. There are no sunshades back here. Uh, we have that beautiful headliner, a couple uh, map lights above, for example. It's very, very nice back here. All right, let's put uh, the girl seat back there and get into the front seat. Memory seats up here, Lexicon sound system. Very, very nice again. Uh, great materials here. We have auto folding mirrors, Genesis skid plate. We have uh, the aluminum pedals here look very, very nice. Beautiful seats again we have adjustive uh, bolsters here so when you put into sport mode they'll tighten up for you thigh extension here for taller people these seats are awesome uh, that's all I'll say about it they're fantastic so let's go and close the door sounds pretty good sounds luxury to me this interior is starting to show its age so many other Genesis products have a fully digital screen here 
This is kind of half digital. This is all analog for the speedometer and fuel gauge. And then it's a digital for the information here. Um, and it's just really small. And then it's a digital for the tachometer. So it's unfortunate um, for a car of this price that you're getting a real, like, honestly, this is uh, unacceptable, but is it that big of a deal? It depends who you are, all right? But this could be done a heck of a lot better. The new TLX, for example, went fully digital back here. And doesn't fully digital doesn't mean better, but this screen is pretty low resolution and it's just, yeah, it's fine. You can watch the revs a little bit, right? Uh, head of display is also really old here. It is super small. It doesn't give me a lot of information. At least it's crisp and bright, and that's important. It's, it's probably the most important thing for a head up display. This 11 inch screen also getting a little dated at this point. Uh, the software in here is not the newest. I do like this backdrop here, but the software in here is not the newest. Honestly, I don't spend a lot of time in here. Once I got my preset set um, for Sirius XM, I usually don't get into this. I am using, plug in my phone. That's the only way you can get your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to work. It is not wireless here. It's uh, pretty unfortunate in that regard. But I do like the ergonomics here. It's easy to get to the screen. Nice big screen. It is clear. It just, again, it's showing its age just a little bit. Love all the dials. P uh, power and volume knob here, tuning knob, traditional buttons here. So if I need to get back to Sirius XM, it's that easy. And then I can press media and it'll get right, um, get me right back into Android Auto, which is absolutely fantastic because it's, it's pulling up YouTube music. Um, so it's kind of like a shortcut, but I don't think that was the intention there. So this is a digital haptic feedback and auditory feedback for heated seats. Heated seats are now standard for 2024, even on the base grade. Uh, Sports Prestige has this heated steering wheel, and I think Sport the 3.3 the gets the ventilated seats. And you probably get ventilated seats even on the uh, rear wheel drive um, base engine. I like the traditional shifter here. Not a very long throw. It's not the most satisfying. And this is a bit plain, even though it is leather. Look at the attention to detail. We have the doors and stuff. It would have been nice to get a little bit more uh, pizzazz here on the shifter. Cup holders are nice. The wireless charger works really, really well with my Pixel 8. Uh, drive mode select here. Here's a 360 camera. It's fantastic, very high resolution. Uh, auto brake hold in here is awesome. Um, it doesn't, uh, for example, if I put it in a drive, Let's say I get out of it. I can come to a stop and it doesn't automatically uh, engage. I can just press my foot down again, a little bit harder, and then it engages auto brake hold. So really cool feature there. Really, really like that. Um, and then also new for 2024 is this USB-C inside the, uh, the ar armrest area. Glove box over here, pretty simple. Felt lined, very nice, very luxurious materials, super soft touch all the way around. Um, and it is, it, it is good interior, but we see so much more intricate and high level interiors from Genesis and the G80 and the GV70, the G, GV80, uh, the G90, for example. It's just that this one seems to be falling back a little. It's not keeping up with the pack, even though they're updating a little bit. The steering wheel is nice. I, I have no complaints about it. I love the volume knob here, the, the seek, or your, you say your preset button here, your next song, if you're an Android Auto. Uh, playing Amazon Music, something like that. Really simple, so as much as I dogged on this screen, it is super easy uh, to cycle through your information here. Uh, fuel economy. Well, I'm getting, uh, it, there's no stop-start engine feature in here, which a lot of you guys are probably happy about. Because of that, this engine is always idling, it's always drinking fuel. The best I see if I'm not idling around is about 18, 19 miles per gallon in town. But honestly, I'm seeing about 16 to 17 if there's a good amount of idling going on. Uh, the safety features here are fantastic. Radar cruise control lane keep is pretty good. Uh, and this Genesis logo looks pretty high quality. So I'm done talking about this interior. It's pretty good overall. Uh, just a little small for the back passengers and the technology seemingly, even though this is updated, it's still not quite up to date to other Genesis products. So let's get on the road. Just uh, driving around this Walmart parking lot here. Uh, I think I'm in normal mode. Yeah, comfort mode, I mean. Uh, there is no normal mode, it's Eco Comfort Sport Sport Plus. Comfort mode is pretty good. It has a pretty soft ride, uh, still sporty enough. Um, and the steering is still has a nice heft to it, even in comfort mode. And of course, Sport and Sport Plus mode, it gets tighter everywhere, including the steering. But the steering here in comfort mode is, is very relaxing. Getting into the brakes here. I love the brakes, super, super progressive, very sharp too. Uh, Getting into the gas, well, 
in comfort mode, it's not very responsive. I'll just say that. <laughs> if you want to have fun in here, you pretty much have to put the pedal completely down in comfort mode. The comfort mode is probably there to have better emissions on paper or something. It's just, it's a dog and it kind of reminds me of the Kona. I know there's another Hyundai product, totally unrelated, but it's another, it's a Hyundai product. So I have to bring it up. The Kona Turbo is a dog. You have to be in sport mode to make it enjoyable. And I'm not saying you have to be in sport mode here, but to get the, the most out of this setup, I am driving in sport mode, I would say 75% of the time. Um, I get to hear more of the exhaust. And there's no, I wish I had some feedback from the exhaust, little cracks and burbles there just isn't. Um, but my gosh, you're hit with a wall of torque, just immense amount of torque. It is not a very linear engine. It kind of reminds me in some ways of the inline six from a BMW. Not quite as, uh, not quite as silky smooth as that. That's like the best six cylinder engine probably on the market, the, the B58 engine. Uh, this, gosh, lots of torque, so much torque, but the more you rev it, it doesn't feel like you're getting a lot more power out of it. You're still going fast though. How would I compare this to the TLX engine? Uh, the three liter turbocharged engine that has 355 horsepower and 354 pound feet of torque, somewhere around there. Um, that's more fun to ring out. This car is no doubt faster. There's no doubt. Um, this has what an extra 10 horsepower on paper, maybe an extra 20 more pound feet of uh, pound feet of torque on paper, but it feels quite a bit faster than the TLX Type S. And maybe because it's lighter being rear wheel drive. And I've also driven the all wheel drive version of this. Honestly, I would probably get the all wheel drive version over the rear wheel drive. I don't know what it is. Maybe the 255s in the back just aren't thick enough, but if I try to power out of a turn here, I lose traction quickly in this car. It has a lot of power, has a ton of torque. That's a reason for that, but I would be getting, rear, if I was getting this car rear wheel drive, it would be the more manageable 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. Um, and I think that's a great buy. If I was getting this twin turbo V6, I'd be getting the all wheel drive so I can put down the power a little bit more safely for everyday driving uh, and still maximize the engine. Otherwise, I have traction issues here in this car. Even in nice, flat, warm Florida with perfect streets, I still have traction issues. Uh, could be the tires. They are Michelin Pilot Sports, if I remember right. Maybe we just need better tires here. But those are pretty good tires to my understanding, and it should be able to put down the power. But when you only have 255 width, maybe that's what's holding back uh, this rear-wheel drive Genesis G70. So I'd be spending an extra 1800 bucks or whatever and getting uh, the all-wheel drive version of this instead of the rear-wheel drive. If you want rear-wheel drive, just get the 300 horsepower, two and a half liter, like I said. I don't have a whole lot of turns here in Florida, as you guys know. I love the steering of this. If you were planning to do this and like take this in the canyons and Colorado or I don't know, California, the rear wheel drive model is gonna be more fun. But if you're in the canyons too, you don't need a lot of power. So just get the rear wheel drive uh, two and a half liter turbo. But the, the, the liveliness of the steering here just feels super light, super direct, very accurate as well. Um, it feels it feels even better than the IS, the Lexus IS uh, rear wheel drive models with the naturally aspirated V6. I would take this over an IS, uh, not the V8. Of course, I would take the V8. I wish Genesis, they canceled the V8. I wish Genesis was able to have a direct competitor to the IS 500 with a V8 in here, but those days are gone, right? All right, let's just put it into comfort mode here since we're just cruising. Um, it's smooth, it's comfortable. I do have a little, like when I go over speed bumps and like pretty bad pavement, which there's not a lot of here right in Florida, but I do have a small clunk coming from the front left. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way. Um, I haven't had it and there's a G, uh, G70 there as well, I think. But in other Genesis products, I haven't had any suspension clunks that I remember. Also in the past, the downshifting transmission as you come to a stop has bothered me. Um, and it's messed with the predictability of the braking here. It's not as, as noticeable as it used to be. I can still notice it, but it's not, it's not a deal breaker for me. I still uh, really enjoy bringing this car to a stop and 
uh, the transmission doesn't kind of get in the way like it used to. I don't know if they tuned it different or maybe my preferences have just changed over the years, but I really like how this vehicle drives. It is quiet. I feel like I get a lot of white noise though. I don't know if it's pumped into the cabin or not. Uh, the Lexicon system, I would give it like an eight. I want more bass. I, it's typically the case with most uh, stock systems. I want more bass out of it, but it does get loud and it sounds pretty good. So I have no complaints and the cabin's small. So it fills it quite nicely. And it has a nice 3D effect, sometimes 3D effects in cars. Um, it just sounds artificial or you're like in an echo chamber here. It does a really good job of making you feel immersed instead of like a, 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 a natural 3D effect. Um, responsiveness, I'm not going to go into comfort mode. It's not very responsive in comfort mode, but here in um, sport mode, pedal down. Oh, F yes. F yes. Yes. Single downshift and go. And that's the thing. If I was in comfort mode, it would probably have to do a double downshift, take its sweet time. But uh, in, in sport mode, it never, it never really gets past sixth or seventh gear in town. And so it's always happy to jump right to that perfect gear. It almost acts as a, a six, six speed auto and six speed autos are awesome for just picking a gear, grabbing it and riding it hard. And that's what it did right there. I love this eight speed auto in sport mode. I hate the tuning of it in comfort mode. So I'm gonna just leave it in sport mode here the rest of the review. Let's see if, I mean, I don't know what that Jeep's doing here. Uh, they're going, they're taking the outside lane. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, smooth, lots of power. I want more engine feedback. I want loudness coming into the cabin. And God bless this Camry, or sorry, Accord. Uh, I just drove the Camry. But the, the Accord Coupe here. Long live the Accord Coupe. There won't be a lot left of them. They just pull out in front of people. Goodness gracious. Um, yeah, I want more. I want more from the exhaust. I want more from the engine. I feel like Acura gives it me a little bit more from a super handling all wheel drive setup with that three liter turbo. I do have paddle shifters on here. Um, I hardly ever use them, but I guess I can play with them for a little bit here. Second gear, right? Just riding it. What's engine braking like uh, when I get up the pedal here? Not a whole lot of engine braking. Uh, but at least it slows down a little bit. <laughs> um, okay, this is our one turn we can really uh, have fun here, guys. Yep. I eased into the pedal there and I could still feel those rear tires fighting for traction. Um, so. I'll just leave it there. I, I like the Genesis G70 performance is, is where it excels. Uh, materials also where it excels. Back seat's just really small. Um, it's getting a little bit dated up here in the front. Um, but if you can get a rear wheel drive model with a two and a half liter for around, uh, I think it's, they start around the, in the forties, if I remember correctly, the mid, the mid forties, I think that's a great deal. Um, and then twin turbo V6, get the all wheel drive on it because uh, yeah, you're just gonna have a lot more traction and, and be able to put down all that power in more situations. And uh, zero to 60 here is supposed to be around four, four and a half to 4.7 seconds if I remember correctly. I haven't been testing it because I don't trust the traction here on these rear tires. Uh, but I will hammer it here from a stop when we get an opportunity. And I don't like sport plus mode. It keeps the gears a little bit too much uh, for street driving. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> it absolutely killed uh, the power there when it, when we lost traction. It just cut the power completely. Yes, I could probably take off uh, traction control. I don't even know where that button is. So maybe I can. Maybe I have to do. It. Oh, there it is. It's by the drive mode. Uh, that is a ridiculous Ram truck. Uh, you know, lots of. They're, that's a pretty cool truck though. Just lots of propaganda written all, all over it. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's uh, weave through traffic here. This thing has just got tons of pow power, tons of power. Uh, uh, okay, as that van just merges into my lane there and then recorrects, but that truck is 
pretty mind-blowing. I don't think I've ever seen tires that big on a truck before, or that wide, all four of them. That's pretty impressive. All right, but anyways, I gotta stay focused. Thank you, Genesis, for sending this to me. Um, fantastic vehicle. Can't wait for the next generation, because I, I don't think they're gonna be updating the interior. Now, there are also rumors that the G70 could be getting canceled for fully electric. And I mean, I would be sad to see that happen. The Kia Stinger got canceled, which was its, uh, you know, brother from another mother, right? And uh, yeah, it's just unfortunate. If this car goes to the wayside, it's, uh, yeah, the brand was kind of, it kind of started on the G70, the G80, right? And the G90. And you're taking a little bit of its heritage out of the picture. But if they replace it with something fully electric, again, it's not going to feel the same. Uh, but I'll see you guys down below. Would you be getting the twin turbo V6? rear wheel drive all wheel drive or would you be getting uh the inline four the updated the enlarged inline four to two and a half liters rear wheel drive or all wheel drive on that as well uh or would you be getting the acura tlx type s um the acura uh, i have to say it probably looks a little cooler um the all wheel drive system is really nice to have this handles a lot better i feel like it's more playful it feels lighter and the power here is much more noticeable, um, especially with the immense amount of torque you get at low RPMs. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.